Hello everyone. Um, it's a great day in North Georgia. It got hot though today guys. It hit uh, something like 94. So as you can see the bees are starting to beard up. And that's just what they do in this heat. But uh, man I'll tell you what. There ain't nothing better than walking through the bee yard on a nice uh, warm evening like this. And if you've ever baked anything in your house I gotta tell you, every season brings a different fragrance to the bee yard. This particular one, it almost smells like the bees are baking oatmeal and walnut cookies. Uh, not quite as sweet, but it's kind of got that oaty, nutty fragrance in the bee yard. So I don't know what that's from that the bees are bringing in right now. Uh, but it smells pretty good. So I just like kind of walking out here. Uh, this is a nice therapy. So the bees are uh, just kind of chilling. The last of the foragers are coming back. And um, here's some of my um, deep horizontal hives and this one right here. That's one of my lands hives. This is another deep horizontal here. I want to show you guys just a couple things that I've done differently with my lands hives. Um, I talked about a couple modifications that I've done in one of my previous videos. So there's really only two and I'm going to show you one right now. Okay, the first one, and if you'll notice, if you can see the wood here, I actually have three pieces of wood. Um, the directions call for two by tens and so I've got one here and I've got one here but right here I've got a two by four and so all that did was give me a little extra depth so if you look at the entrances that I've got here here and here there's more room I got, oh you got me okay so I've got more room here and here and so that gave me about another three inches of space right below uh, their entrance so what I did with that is I put some um, uh, peat moss in there. Now, I, I don't know if I'm recommending you do that because this is the first year I've done it myself. So I'll let you know how that goes. That was one of uh, Fedora Lazutin's um, thoughts about modifications to a hive if he were ever to, to build one with any other tweaks. So that, that's what I did. I'm, I'm trying it out. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, I'm a little nervous about it to be honest with you. I don't want all kinds of critters living in there, but it's supposed to create a symbiotic relationship uh, with the bees and other microbes that live in the hive. So let's see, let's see what happens. All right, let's talk about the other one. The other one is the kind of frames that I use in my Layens hives. So I'm going to show you those right now. So right here, let's see if I can do this. Let's see what you see. There, there you are. Okay, so I want to show you what I'm doing with the frames. So what you see here is I've got sections of three-quarter inch um, pine board. That's all that is. And the bees propolize it together. And uh, below that is a three-eighths inch bee space. Let's get in here. Yeah, the bees haven't even worked over here yet. This was a late season swarm. It was pretty small. So let me just bring you in so you can see. Okay. So here, on this end of the hive. Oop. All right, so over here, these are actually Langstroth frames that I modified to make them into Layens frames is what they are. Okay, so I put these little pieces of bamboo, that's all this is, just to make sure that um, there's uh, no way that these boards could accidentally crush the bees. So let me just pull one of these frames up here and let you look at it. I might have shown them to you before, but here we go. So, this is, let me see what you see. So this is actually um, a Langstroth frame that I cut down. Let me show you the top. This is the part that was milled by the factory. This is the part that I cut and I just uh, dadoed these little uh, sections so that the, the frame arm could fit on that. And I'm going to show you some pictures in the shop here of how I built this. Uh, so here's my Langstroth frames about to be cut on the table saw and I just trim them down to the same exact length as the Layens frame, which you see here. And on the square end, all you have to do is just dado uh, a little bit of a recess so that the arms can fit on them. And I uh, just add an extra length to the arm 
and assemble them just like a regular Langstroth frame. Uh, it just has a little wax starter strip on it and that's it. So I got a little fishing line, a little cross wire for support right here. Um, okay, so put that back in there. So the reason why I like these frames that have the 3 8 three eighths of an inch space in between is so I can use the better beetle blaster. I use these to control hive beetles. They get in no matter what, it seems. So these sit right in between the frames, like this. That's why I have this modification. That, that is really the whole crux of it right here, is to control hive beetles. Now if I find a better way to do it, I may not uh, need to uh, use these modified Langstroth frames anymore. I could probably switch back, or actually switch over to uh, Leo Shirashkin's um, solid bars with no gaps in between them and no gap in between here either. Let's see if I see any hive beetles. So, so far I haven't even seen any and that's a good sign. Usually they corral them up towards the top. Now, I wasn't planning on shooting the video today. It just so happens that I'm doing this. I'm not really wearing my typical bee clothes. But let's have a look in here. There's our brood nest. I don't see a single beetle anywhere, which is fantastic. And I don't have my eagle eye reading glasses on either, and I can't really zero in on anything. I, I did see one hive beetle. I didn't didn't walk across the camera path, but I did see one. So that means I'm going to put one of these in here. Whoop. All right, so this is filled with powder. You can use diatomaceous earth. And in this case, I'm using uh, lime dust, hydrolyzed lime dust. And that's what they use to line uh, the ball fields at the baseball games with. So all I do is just make sure I've got a little, little room right here and the bees will run them into there. They probably only need to have this one. I'll just leave this one in here for them. Any in there, guys. Yeah, this is the first time I've been in here, actually, since the swarm was captured. This was um, late May. A late May swarm capture. So there they are. So there's the beetle trap right there in between the frames. I want to push that down, make sure it's good and tight, good and snug. All right, I'm going to just peek on this side here. Like I say, since I'm in here, I may as well. Uh, there's beetles right here. So that's where they got them corralled on this side. So I'm going to put them, I'm going to put a trap over here. Yep, they are. They are in. The beetles have made it in, so I'm going to give them a beetle trap on this side, and that'll make it easier for them. Right over here. Yeah, there we go. There, guys. You can round up them beetles right there. Chase them in there. Chase them in, guys. There you have it, my two modifications that I use on the Layens Hive. This is a very good hive design on its own. These modifications are just something that I've chosen to do based on my climate zone. In the south, we do get a lot of hive beetles, and I wanted to try the extra depth to the Layens Hive to see how that was going to work out. And I will keep you posted on that in future videos. And if you like the videos, by all means, uh, feel free to subscribe. And um, also, too, let me know what kind of content uh, you would like to see in the future. Uh, that'll help me make more good videos. So thanks for watching, friends, and feel free to visit my website, enjoybeekeeping.com. Have a good day, friends. We'll see you next time.